This segment of Delmarva Life is brought to you by Peninsula Regional Medical Center. We've talked heart disease this week, personality impact, food and fat. So today in Matters of the Heart, our focus turns to exercise. But hold on a second. We're not just talking about hopping on the treadmill or jogging in the park. Exercise is much more than that. For instance, did you ever think that housework could benefit your heart health? Well, according to Mary Maids, vacuuming for 30 minutes burns about 90 calories. Now, if you want to increase the benefits, try adding some lunges to your vacuuming. Washing windows can burn calories too, but use both hands to get the maximum benefit. Bottom line. It's believed housework that includes vacuuming, dusting, stretching, and scrubbing can burn a minimum of 250 calories an hour. So it's a win-win. You get a clean house and you get your workout in for the day. But Jimmy, let's be honest. We don't clean our house every day. So other types of exercise are vital for a healthy heart. But do you know what's best, running or walking? And how much damage, if any, is sitting around watching television really causing? Well, joining us today to tell us more is exercise physiologist Kelsey Hawkins with Peninsula Regional Medical Center. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Glad to be here. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this debate. You know, it's one that's alive and well, running versus walking. Can you kind of break it down? How does each of them help us? And which one's better? Yeah, um, sure. So both are a great form of exercise. Um, running is a little bit more strenuous. It's more of a vigorous type exercise. Causes your body to work a little bit harder. Your mm -hmm. heart rate's normally higher. Um, it can be harder on your joints, but you can burn a significant amount of calories in a shorter period of time. So would you suggest one over the other? Um, if I had to pick, I'd probably go with walking only because it's more appropriate for the average person. Okay. So it's a little bit easier on the body and not everybody is able to run. So it's always important when you start an exercise program to get the doctor to clear you to make sure you're healthy enough to exercise. Yeah. And sometimes when people do run, they take it to an extreme. They train for a marathon. But you Absolutely. know, last year we saw some headlines where a couple people literally dropped dead at the end of the marathon. Um, why does that happen and, and should that discourage us from training? I don't think it should discourage anybody, um, but again, it is important to make sure you check with your doctor to make sure that your body is healthy enough, your heart is healthy enough for that vigorous activity. Um, as far as why this has happened to these people, um, a lot of things could play into it. Um, genetics is a big risk factor for heart disease, so it could be there could be a genetic um, underlying issue. It could be viruses, birth defects, mm. um, improper nutrition, or dehydration. So there's multiple different things that could be playing into that. Okay, so even if you're in reasonably good shape, can you still overdo it? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, you can always overdo it, and our body is amazing in the fact that it can tell us when something's not right. So there's signs? There are signs and symptoms you're doing too much. And what are they? Um, dizziness, chest pain, heart palpitations, unusual fatigue, shortness of breath. These are all signs that you may be overdoing it and in some aspect. You're overdoing it need to stop. Okay, now to a sedentary lifestyle. A recent study found that women who live a generally healthy lifestyle and who watch fewer than seven hours of television each week had a 92% lower risk of having a heart attack and were 66% less likely to have high cholesterol, blood pressure, and diabetes. Now, dumb it down for us a little <laughs> bit for those who watch too much TV or, or maybe play too many video, video games. games. How yeah. does that impact their heart? Um, sedentary lifestyles can cause multiple different health problems. Um, you could develop obesity, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, um, your fasting blood sugars could be really high. So exercise is a good way of helping decreasing that risk for heart disease. Um, it helps by decreasing your blood pressure, helping you lose weight, controlling those cholesterol levels, um, and overall just giving you a really good sense of good health. So so bottom line, you would say just basically get up and get moving. Absolutely, and there's simple ways to do that, you know, walking instead of driving, parking far from an entrance, gardening, housework like you said earlier. And there's other things that we can even do at home or at work, wherever. Absolutely. Don't go anywhere because you're going to show us some of those, okay. right? All right. Yes. Kelsey, thank you. Thank Looking you. forward to this. Well, one man who knows the true importance of exercise is Mike Hall. You probably know him as the world's strongest drug-free man. It was just over a year ago when he suffered the heart, literally, stopping Widowmaker heart attack. You're going to see where he is today and what message he has for you. And later, maybe you're thinking about popping the question this Valentine's Day. 
learn what to look for while shopping for that sparkler for your sweetie. Plus, where you can find it later on, we get an inside look at some classic Valentine's Day diamonds. But first, we've been talking the benefits of exercise, but now let's talk the benefits of healthy eating. Dr. Oz gives us some tips on automating our eating to help us lose weight. Hi, I'm Dr. Oz. Weight loss isn't easy. So give yourself a break by automating your meals. When the core of what you're eating stays the same, it takes the guesswork out of dieting. Find three healthy breakfast, lunch, and dinner recipes that you love, and then perfect them. They'll become an easy fix so you'll have one less thing to stress over. 